closest most of us get to a food crisis is in the news, or perhaps a request for a donation. But right now, the UN is pleading for funds to support the 20 million most in need out of the 70 million believed to be in food crisis. The UN, NGOs, and individual governments will quickly or slowly raise money, buy, and distribute aid. A simple plan. Where and when there are shortages of food supplies, prices move higher. Hoarding can start, and governments often then look to restrict trade in food, which is hoarding at a national level, moving prices higher, with speculators joining the cycle. Extreme weather back in 2010 reduced world wheat harvests by 5 percent. Now, that might sound rather dull, and I may have just introduced the most boring slide ever seen at TEDx Lausanne. But this 5 percent reduction in wheat harvests resulted in an 85 percent increase in wheat prices in under two months. The supply and demand in agriculture can be very finely balanced. Now, for countries that spend maybe 40 percent of their income on food, this fine balance can be very dangerous. And however well or badly you think we are handling food crises now, climate change will make it harder. The tragedies of mass migration and famine often have climate change as their root cause. And we have an expectation of more and more dramatic climate events in the future. So what if the numbers facing food crisis were to double? What if it ran to hundreds of millions of people? Well, who could rule it out? And why would we think that our existing responses to food crisis would be able to cope? Now, to get ahead of the problem, we might look to develop food reserves. They would need to be raw materials, such as wheat, corn, vegetable oil, proteins. And many countries do maintain some form of food reserve, notably China, but also Tanzania, Kenya and others. The big problem with food reserves is the capital cost. Now, for Switzerland, a food reserve to cover its 8 million people would cost a few billion dollars to fill. And if we wanted to maintain our consumption of cheese and chocolate, maybe $10 billion. More globally, a goal to fill a food reserve to cover hundreds of millions of people would cost hundreds of billions of dollars. And managing the reserves would cost additional billions annually. Now, should society wish to pursue that path, I know where the money is. It's in your pockets, where we would like it to stay. Now, storage is not the answer. What we need to find is a global supply chain for agricultural products not already destined for food. It needs to be available 12 months of the year, ideally under the control of government, so it could be redirected into emergency aid. It needs to be big enough both to meet an aid need and be a credible deterrent against food price speculation and food hoarding. Well, we have it. Crop-based biofuel. Biofuel is made from crops such as corn, soybeans, sugarcane and wheat. And these crops are harvested on six continents and then converted into biofuel to be blended with both gasoline and diesel. The CO2 emissions from biofuel can be less than half those of fossil fuel. But the crops used to make biofuel could feed 400 million people all year round. Now, some suggest that these biofuel crops should always be directed to assist with malnutrition. And certainly, malnutrition deserves our continued attention. But its tragedy exists as an issue of poverty, not of supply. These crops that are grown for biofuel simply would not get planted if there was no biofuel market. Now, governments look to promote biofuel as they reduce greenhouse gas emissions, increase energy security and rural employment. The overwhelming majority of all biofuel used is done so under government compulsion, with structures in place to monitor compliance. So whether oil companies want to or not, in over 60 countries, they are forced to supply biofuel blended into both gasoline and diesel. <clears throat> now, this makes it big business. Annual biofuel revenues topping $135 billion. 
So can we find a way in times of crisis to redirect these crops from biofuel use into emergency food aid? Now, individual governments would need the authority to take over biofuel crop supply contracts. Well, this sort of power already exists. In the United States, the agency FEMA has the right, in times of emergency, to requisition materials from private hands. Many other countries have similar structures. What about the cost? Does it have to be a cost? Free is our favorite price. Well, the biofuel producers, they don't really want to sell their crops for money, which is good, because we don't want to give them any. Biofuel producers want to sell biofuel. Okay, so let's give them that. But not real biofuel, virtual biofuel. Government agencies taking in the food crops could pay for them with virtual biofuel in the form of credits. The biofuel producers could sell these credits to oil companies who would gladly buy them, provided they were allowed to include them into their computations of obligated supply. Let's suppose Exxon had the obligation to supply 300,000 cubic meters of biofuel in one particular country. It might meet that obligation to government by supplying 200,000 cubic meters of biofuel and 100,000 cubic meters of virtual biofuel in the form of credits. The revenue from selling the credits to the oil companies will keep the biofuel producer intact. Agriculture would continue to plant and harvest as before. They're unaffected. Oil companies would likely end up slightly better off as they get to supply more of their fossil fuel instead of biofuel. Consumers benefit from more stable food prices, as these biofuel crops are, in effect, acting like an intervention buffer into the markets. And it should also lessen hoarding in advance of climate events, which is good news for people stocking up on alcohol ahead of a hurricane. So it doesn't need to be an incremental financial cost on anyone. Additionally, there's no challenge to market freedoms here. These biofuel markets were set up by governments. They're managed by governments. They are ours to control. The real cost is going to be temporarily higher greenhouse gas emissions from lower biofuel use during the operation of the program. However, okay, there is a however. There's always a catch. Speculators would lose out on the opportunity to profit from food crisis. How, how uh, sorry should we feel? Now, maybe somebody could start an online fundraising campaign to help speculators out. Now, bringing transparency to motivations will reduce speculators' opposition, because nobody is going to openly declare themselves as wanting to profit from food crisis. The agencies taking in the food crops would be free to sell them and utilize the funds or use the aid directly. It might not match, for example, if the geography of supply and demand were in different places, or if there was a requirement to access additional proteins. If the crop-based biofuel industry didn't exist for its greenhouse gas savings, we would surely now create it for the safety net that it provides to global food supplies. What now? Well, the government structures that would be required are in place. What's needed is a will to act. For two years, I've been discussing this idea with biofuel producers, and my goal today is to bring this initiative into the public domain. And our hope and our aim is to develop a functioning system while there's still time. Let's skip forward to a point in the future, a bad point, a point where a combination of destructive climate events have all occurred at the same moment. Sadly, it's not so difficult to imagine. Suppose 200 million people have been displaced, and in addition to the human cost, the regions affected are plunged into economic crisis. Let me give you two alternative scenarios. First, the status quo. The UN puts out a call to raise $50 billion in emergency aid. But given the unprecedented nature of the crisis, 
Many donor countries are somewhat preoccupied with their domestic situations. Food prices rise, double, double again, and the UN raises its call, looking for a hundred billion dollars in aid. What would happen next? I hope we never find out. Alternatively, the moment the same series of devastating climate events occurs, the UN head of humanitarian aid invites a suspension of global biofuel markets across the world, from the United States to Europe. To South America, to Indonesia, to Japan, biofuel markets are suspended. A total of 50 billion dollars worth of food crops are exchanged for virtual biofuel in the form of credits, and the aid flows. Food prices don't spike. Hoarding doesn't take place. The focus of attention is not on raising money, but on dealing with the crisis. Thank you.